So this is our cash flow statement. Um, it's a cash flow statement. It's the third part of the Jackson PLC question. Um, one thing that jumps out of you straight away here is the format. Um, we have seven different headings. I've underlined each one and I have highlighted the first letter of each one. These seven different headings are the structure, they're the kind of skeleton structure of the cash flow statement. And the beginning, um, the first letter in each heading I've highlighted because there's an acronym there, O-R-T-C-E-M-F, um, started operating activities, returns on investment, and so on. Um, just a handy way for you to remember them. I would always kind of write that down myself before I'd start any question. Um, get used to thinking through or TC, EMF, and then once you've seen these enough and you've written them enough, you should be able to remember them. If not, obviously, like anything, you'd have to learn off the format. This is very, very important that you have this not only um, in, I suppose, not only knowing what the words are, <clears throat> but you also have to have them in the right um, sequence. You, you can't have capital expenditure above here or vice versa. There is generally a mark going for the seven. Um, it's they're easy marks to get. Uh, <clears throat> again, everything under that are the figures that we're going to be um, using in our question. Generally, um, they're always the same. There's about 13, 14 of them there that we can put in. Um, we'll look at the first one here. It's our net cash inflow from operating activities. I have done this figure already to be 140,350. Where do I get it? Like every one of the cash flow um, statements, it, we work off the last answer from the previous part. So the previous part was our part B, our reconciliation, and it's my last figure is the net cash inflow. That's the figure I take forward. That's my 140,350. That's why I started. Now, the rest of these figures, okay, net cash inflow from operating activities operating activities being um, quite important the money that we have here the hundred and forty thousand three hundred and fifty that is the cash inflow we've had for the year but it's only to do with the operations of the business everything that falls outside of the operation for the business was not included here and we will see it down here debentures investments tax Dividends, they're common things. They have nothing to do with the operations of the business. So we're going to work through them here. Other things we have here to do with capital expenditure. And the last part is more to do with our financing, um, our finance buy section. So the first thing we look at is debenture interest paid. Not debenture interest, but debenture interest paid. You may remember we've already worked out our debenture interest for the year to be 7,200. Alongside that, we're also told here that I had interest due, debenture interest due, at the beginning of the year of 2000 and at the end of this year of 1400. So how do I find out how much interest I've paid? Well, we have a note down here on our debenture interest. Um, I'm going to go through the first part here. So this note, first of the first, I had a balance due of 2000. Where do I see that? Well, this is my interest payable due. It's my liability at the first of the first. Interest for the year, 7,200. I worked that out for the um, first part, my um, my, my uh, abridged profit and loss at the beginning of the question. Um, so my interest from the first of the first is 2,000 and my interest for this year is 7,200. Therefore, I owe 9,200 this year. However, at the end of the year, I only owe 1,400, again, given in the question here for the end of this year. So what's the difference? If I owe 9,200 over the course of previous years and this year, and I only owe 1,400, I only owe that at the end of the year, my missing figure here is what I've paid, because I no longer owe this, 7,800. So that's my missing figure. Um, that's 7,800 put it in brackets, is the figure I'm going to take up here for my debenture interest paid. My investment income, which is the uh, next one, is done quite similarly. Um, again, I've worked out my investment income this year to be 2,400 um, in the first part. That's also in the first video. Um, so again, I'm going to look at my interest for the 1st of the 1st and my interest for the 31st of the 12th. 
exact same. First of the first, given on the uh, balance sheet from last year. This is in the balance sheet from this year. Where did I get those figures? Well, they are my investment interest due. This is my investment interest due to me. 1,800 last year, 2,100 this year. The 2,400 I have is from note one. It's what I had from my uh, my first part. So that's the interest I owe, I'm owed from last year. The interest I'm owed from this year. So that's the total interest that I'm owed. And I only have 2,100 owed to me at the end. Therefore, I have received the rest. The other 2,100 I've received. Again, above here, have this done out and that's my total returns on investment and servicing of finance my total here is 5700 taxation taxation what are we told 51200s from last year 55000s from this year but i also have a taxation charge on profits of 51000 so those three bits of information i'm going to key those in again looking for my tax paid we were not told how much tax we were paid. We were told the tax of the 1st of the 1st. We were told the tax of the 31st of the 12th. Both of these in the balance sheet. And this 51,000 comes from my taxation charge for the year. That's how much tax I had on my profits from this year. So if I owed 51,200 from last year. I owe 51,000 from this year. That's a total of 102,200 I owe. And I only owe 55,000 at the end. Therefore, I've had to pay the remainder, and I've obviously paid it off. My tax paid, the cash that I've paid out for tax, is 47200 Again, for the cash flow statement, we only care about how much cash we've paid out. And for taxation, it's 47200 <clears throat> Now, the next part here, to do with our sale of fixed assets, is basically the trade in value of the allowance. It is how much... I've received it's how much cash I've received from my disposal so they had cost 70,000 depreciation 27,000 but they were sold for 41,300 this 41,300 is cash that I received for the sale of my fixed asset therefore this is the figure that I put in that's the amount I received payment to acquire fixed asset how do I know I paid more money to acquire a fixed asset? Well, I had assets from last year and assets from this year. I know I've disposed of an asset, but my assets have increased. Therefore, I must have also purchased an asset. This can be found quite simply in terms of uh, finding out the missing figure. I have my balance from the first of the first to be 550,000. My disposal, if you look at the question again, my disposal is 70,000 because I'm told assets which would cost 70,000 were disposed of, okay? They were sold. So that's my 70,000 cost gone out there. And I know from my balance sheet for the end of 2018 that my balance in fixed assets was 650,000. So I, my original balance to the first of the first, I got rid of an asset and therefore my balance was 480,000. It went up to 650. How did it go up? Well, I've obviously gone off and I purchased more fixed assets in the amount of 170,000. To purchase the fixed assets, I would have had to pay cash. So this cash that I've paid here can be taken out. 170,000 cash paid out. Sale of investment, I've just already shown it there. There's nothing there. Why is there nothing there? Well, it was 40,000 here and 40,000 there. It hasn't changed. Therefore, there is no um, alteration needed to my investments. Um, I total that up. By the way, there can be um, investments sold or purchased. Um, so obviously go through that yourself. Don't just assume that it'll always be zero. Um, 170,000 that I paid for fixed assets and I've received 41,300. Subtotal 128,700. Ordinary dividends paid. My ordinary dividends paid. So I found out a bit of information here earlier that I dealt with. The total dividend paid was six cent per share from the 510 shares. I multiplied that out previously to get me 30,600. That was my dividends paid for the year. Dividend paid for the year. There's nothing else I have to do to work that out. I don't have to do notes like this for debentures and for income and tax um, because I know that I've paid, I know my paid figure. My paid figure is 30,600. 
So again, I can um, highlight that figure. Now, um, ORTCE, the last two headings have to come after a subtotal. So we need to do a subtotal here before we basically look at our, uh, more or less our finance buy section, uh, along with sometimes government securities. Um, the first part here has to be separated. I have my 140,000 cash that I have made this year from my operations in my business. And this is the money that I've had to receive and, and spend um, cash wise throughout the year that did not have to do with my operations. And that leaves me with a net cash outflow. This does not always have to be outflow. If I had a positive figure here, it would be net cash inflow, which is important. You have to have the correct term. And so it's a net cash outflow before liquid resources and servicing of, I'm sorry, and financing um, before those two headings. So it's a net cash outflow of minus 71,850. Um, two more parts just to put in here, my purchase of government securities. So my government securities I have here, they were zero at the start of the year and they went up 27,000. Therefore, my government securities is going up 27,000. My financing, this is to do with the finance buy section. So debentures, my debentures were 80,000 and they went up to 120,000. They already told us here that 40,000 were issued. So debentures, my debentures have gone up. You can think of it like you've got new debentures, but what is a debenture? A debenture is a loan. Therefore, I've received a loan of 40,000 extra for this year. That's money in. So in terms of a cash flow, a loan, a mortgage, debenture, yes, you receive it and it's seen as a bad thing because you owe the money back. But in terms of cash flow, it's money in. If you get a loan into your bank account, your bank account is going to look a lot better. It's going to be increased significantly. You now have more cash. So, um, but obviously it's bad in terms of the business having to pay it back. But for cash flow, it's positive. Receipts from issue of ordinary shares. My ordinary shares have gone up 60,000. That means that people have purchased shares in my business and they've paid the business for those shares. Again, 60,000 the business has received from issuing shares. Share premium is an additional payments that shareholders will make to have additional benefits. Again, it's the same thing. The 12,000 is money shareholders will pay to the business. So that 112,000 is going to be positive. Um, I have my previous uh, negative net cash outflow of minus 71,000. I've uh, purchased of government security. So just to go through the government securities actually, because I kind of skipped over that. Government securities is when a business basically gives money to the government. They give money to the government so the government can basically go off and spend it. Um, if the government kind of needs, I suppose, needs money to spend in the economy. Um, but the idea is that when you give the government mo the money to the government, it's completely secure. They guarantee that they'll pay you the money back um, and generally a little bit more interest on it as well. So you purchase government securities. It's the same thing more or less as purchasing uh, bonds. So the 27,000 has been given to the government. It's seen as a current asset. I can uh, liquidate it. I can get that back um, at a later date or pretty soon, a year or two down the line. Um, but in terms of what's actually happened is I've given 27,000 out of my bank account um, to these government securities. So that's why that's also negative. Um, and this is positive here. Minus 71, minus 27, plus 112. I have an increase in cash of 13,150. Again, an increase, it could also be a decrease. That is the end of that part. Um, and that's also going to be the first figure we have in part number four. So cash flow statement. This is the part four. It's the last part of the cash flow statement for Jackson PLC. Um, the last part is the reconciliation of net cash to net movement in net debt. It's quite short. Um, it's quite basic, but just to go through it, we're looking at going from net cash to net debt. What's my net cash? Well, again, like the previous questions, we just start with the end of the last part. 13,150 was my increase in cash. 
therefore you just take the last figure from the previous part and you begin with your cash so it was an increase in cash we're moving from that increase in cash to our net debt <coughs> at the end of the year so now we're looking at this from the from the perspective of how do these figures affect my debt how much i owe people um, or companies or government or whatever the first part is my government securities the liquid resources um, so the government securities that I looked at in the uh, question, we had zero at the beginning of the year and we had 27,000 at the end of the year. My government securities is obviously increased by 27,000 over the course of the year. So I have 27,000. Why is it positive? Well, when it comes to looking at it from a debt perspective, I give money to the government so they can hold on to it and spend it as they please and return it to me with an interest. This is a form of an investment. And this is money that I'm owed back. This is not a debt. I'm owed this money back, so I'm going to add it. This is a form of an investment. It's just a separate investment to my financial assets investment. It's an investment in a government security. Um, but I don't actually owe anyone any money. I've just given money to the government and I will receive this back. So this has def it's definitely not de um, increased any debt I have. In fact, it could be seen as decreasing the debt um, that I do have. The next thing I have is debentures. Well, I had a loan of a hundred or I have a loan of eighty thousand, and my loan has gone up to one hundred and twenty thousand because I was issued an additional um, forty thousand euro loan. So, I have a forty thousand euro loan. Well, we had looked at this in the cash flow statement, and we had looked at this as a positive thing, adding the loan because it gave us more money. But now we're looking at it from the perspective of debt. An increasing a loan means that you owe more money back in the future. From a debt perspective, your debt has gone up, which is um, a bad thing. So moving from cash to net debt, this is increasing my debt. Therefore, it will reduce my cash that I will have available in the future. Are the government securities take away an increase in debentures? Again, be careful of this. It's an increase in debentures. More or less, close to the finish now, I just take a subtotal. My change in net debt over the course of the year is €150 Euro positive. I've moved from increasing my cash, 13150 to getting a government securities, a form of an investment of €27,000. Um, and I've also increased my debt that I owe of 40000 so the last two parts of this will actually tell you whether you've done the whole question correctly or not. The last part is your net debt. And your net debt is quite simple. I wouldn't even call it a formula, but um, I just have it out here. It's our cash and our bank and our government securities that we could have here as current assets. Our cash, I don't have bank, but I have government securities. So I'd add the three of those up. Again, they all have to be assets. So the bank cannot be in overdraft. So I add the three of those up and I take away the liabilities. One of them is a short-term liability, the bank overdraft, and the other is a long-term liability, debentures. I have loan in there too, but loan and debentures are the same thing. Generally, you'll just see debentures in a uh, cash flow question. So you add up the assets, you add up the bank overdraft and the long-term loan, and you basically take the liabilities from the assets as you normally would to find out whether you have um, basically at the first, the first, we'll, we'll start that I will find out what our debt situation was like at the beginning of the year. Um, so my net debt at the first of the first, I'm going to look at my assets first. I had cash of 850. I had no bank here and my government security was actually zero at the beginning of the year. Therefore, the first part of this is 850, 850, 0, and 0. Minus my bank overdraft. Bank overdraft was 25,000 at the beginning of the year. Debentures at the beginning of the year was 80,000. And again, there is no loan. So that's 25,000 for the bank overdraft here. 80,000 for the debentures here. And no loan. And if I take the 105,000 away from the 850, Gives me 104,150. 104,150. Why is it in brackets? Why is it negative? Well, my liability side is greater than my asset side. Therefore, I have a, 
uh, a net debt uh, debt it's a deficit um I owe 104,150 at the beginning of the year um, as far as debt is concerned. The same thing is going to be done now, but we're just going to look at it from the end of the year perspective. So the end of the year, I've done up the start of this year, um, cash of 4,000. In terms of other assets, there's no bank and my government securities is 27,000. So 4,000, zero, 27,000. Add these up and I take away the subtotal of the liabilities which is my bank overdraft here in the short term liabilities 15,000 the end of the year and my debentures 120,000 again there is no loan I put in those three figures add them up take them away from the assets it's 31,000 minus 135,000 gives me minus 104,000 so I have a net debt um, again I should probably have brackets in there just not to confuse it um, I have a net debt of 104000 at the end of the year. So the way you figure out whether you've done this question correctly or not, the beginning of the year, you had a net debt of 104150 You then had a positive change in net debt of 150 during the year. So moving through these as a sequence, Plus 150 minus 104,150 should be equal to 104,000 and it of course obviously is. Um, therefore I know that I've more or less balanced the uh, reconciliation and I've been correct with my question. That's the end of cash flow statements.